1976, according to Dolphin, SRI undertook remote sensing investigations at Saqqara, looking for the tomb of the great scribe Imhotep, Alexandria, where they tried to locate the lost library, and Giza, where seismographic tests indicated the possible presence of chambers beneath Khafra's pyramid. In 1977, Dolphin and SRI were back at Giza, initially funded by the U.S. National Science Foundation. Then, in 1978, Edgar Cayce's followers, ARE, popped up, contributing funds to SRI's project, whose official name was the Sphinx Exploration Project. That's from uh, the Stargate Conspiracy, The Truth About Extraterrestrial Life and the Mysteries of Ancient Egypt by Lynn Pinkman and Clive Prince. Uh, this, uh, I don't know who did, uh, this is a Berkeley book. Anyway, this is a really good book. Of course, it does deal with some, you know, outre subjects, but the underlying premise of the book is, is very, very well worth the read. And there is some real high strangeness in here, so I highly recommend it. Hello, and welcome to another edition of The Stench of Truth. Today, I bring you a Greek tragedy brought to you in part by Goldman Sachs. Yes, it seems that everything that Goldman Sachs touches because their entire output and product consists of toxic paper assets that are worth nothing and only serve to hide debt and to uh, artificially inflate their profits at the expense of their own shareholders as well as anybody else that they do any kind of business with whatsoever. And of course I'm talking about what is going on in Greece with their incredible debt crisis and uh, Goldman's role in that, yet to be fully revealed of course, just like their role in the economic situation that the United States had went through and is continuing to go through. So I say to you that uh, whatever we can do to bring misery, strife, and discord in the true tradition of Greek tragedy to Goldman Sachs, then we should do it by all and any means at our disposal. Now, of course, the Grecian parliament has decided to accept an austerity package that is more or less being forced on them from the other member states of the European Union. There are several options that are open to Greece, but none that are very palatable to those who are in power over there. But I must say this, that I have to give credit to the Grecian peoples, because they have staged massive strikes, protests, walkouts, and have, in general, been very vocal in coming out against the austerity package as proposed by the European Union and as has been accepted by the Grecian Parliament. So I want to say bravo to the people of Greece and I hope that you continue to protest unrelentingly and that you continue to put the vice to the austerity package that is being foisted upon you by the European Union and by your own government because they are all work in cahoots together. And I want to illustrate to you this point and that is that what is happening is in Greece is destined to happen here in the United States in Canada, and every other country that is mounting up this debt. Austerity is what is foisted upon these countries, and we've seen it time and time again. Usually it's the IMF that comes in and makes these countries take on this sense of austerity. And who are the people that suffer in austerity programs? Yes, you guessed it. The people who are least able to deal with them. That is the poor, 
and those people who are dependent upon a system that is already in place. Whether by their own doing or not is irrelevant. They are there, they are dependent on the system as it is. And what happens in these austerity programs? Social programs are the first thing to go. Education. Everything that has a chance of bettering the people within those countries are the first things to go. Do you suppose that Goldman Sachs or any of the banking interests in Greece will be negatively affected by this austerity package? I say no, because all of these people who have investments there, they're going to make sure they get their money back out of that system. So they're not going to suffer austerity. Only the people will. And you can bet your last dollar that this is what is planned for us here in the United States. So look carefully at what's going on in Greece and think about how you want to deal with that before it comes to that point. And I'll reiterate again that becoming politically active is vital at this point in time. And I will not accept the fact that things are inevitable and nothing can be done. Because if that's the case, then it has to be proven to me by a vast outpouring of political activism, protests, and all of these things that we see going on in Greece, which I see virtually none of it happening here in the United States. And until I see huge outpourings of political activism that cannot be ignored, then I will continue to urge political activism as the first and foremost thing to be done. And opposing the actions of Goldman Sachs and other Wall Street rapists. All they're doing now is funneling out as much money as they can from anywhere that they can. And using whatever money they get from their investors and others willing to bail them out whenever they screw up royally to feather their own nests and increase their bottom lines. And remember that Goldman Sachs is only the front runner in this. They're the uh, storefront, as it were, for all of the other schemers behind the scenes. So don't let your focus fall too much on them, even though I make it a point of pointing out Goldman Sachs as much as I possibly can, because it serves as a great sounding board for attacking Wall Street in general. So I think now is a really good time to try and make these people pay for every fraudulent, unethical, and illegal activities that they have carried out. Not only to pay with financial and criminal penalties brought against them, but also by instituting a transaction tax, a Tobin tax. On all transactions, it can be a very small percentage, a very small percentage. And to sell it, all you have to do is say, we all pay sales tax for things that we buy right now, Wall Street pays practically nothing. All of these Wall Street mega banks like Goldman Sachs pay next to nothing in taxes in general. It's about time we start funneling money from the only area of our economy that is still producing. And that's in the paper finances of Wall Street. So I'm for a transaction tax. Wall Street, you want to run your hundreds of millions of transactions a day in order to scope off your penny or nickel here or dime there? Then you're going to have to give up 1% of every one of those millions of computer transactions. Every bit of speculation that you undertake 
and all of your other cohorts on Wall Street. Every speculative financial transaction taxed. Imagine the wealth that can be gotten out of that. And imagine what programs it can pay for, including real health care reform, not the debacle that is in Washington, D.C. right now. A Greek tragedy brought to you in part by Goldman Sachs and the other rapists of Wall Street. Coming soon to a country near you. Thank you. Good night.